tutorial, I'm going to show you how to work toe-up socks using DK weight yarn using German short rows instead of traditional wraps and turns and picking up the wraps. Now that's a lot of different features in a sock. I'll run through those one by one so you can see if this style of sock suits you. First, these socks are toe-up, which is in my opinion, the superior way to knit socks, because you end up with no leftover sock yarn. And the reason for that is you knit the most important part of the sock, the foot, and the toe and foot, and then you just use up all of the rest of your yarn in the cuff, knitting it as long as it will go, and you have a little tiny bit of yarn left over you can just throw away and not store. I think that's great. The other thing is uh, you don't have to worry about leaving enough sock, enough yarn for the foot of the sock. When I know me, when I'm knitting a cuff down sock, or when I used to knit cuff down socks, I would always worry about having enough yarn for the foot because you're never entirely sure how much yarn that's going to be. So I would either leave as much as I thought I'd need and then hope I wouldn't run out before I finished, or I would leave way too much and then I'd have leftover yarn. So toe up socks, I think, are <clears throat> a great way to go to use up all the sock yarn and get the longest sock you possibly can. Next, these socks are knit in DK weight, and this is my first sock tutorial where I've ever used this weight of yarn, and I'm really pleased with the way they turned out. I always encourage people to use bigger yarn, bigger needles, thicker yarn, bigger needles when they're learning a new technique because it's much easier to see what you're doing when you're not using tiny needles and sock yarn. But with the German short rows, um, we don't have any wraps to pick up, so the DK weight yarn is fine. You still end up with a sock that knits up pretty quickly, but it's, the, it's a, a thin enough sock that it's totally wearable. It fits inside shoes and boots and everything else, and it's not as thick as a worsted weight sock. So I'm, I'm really happy with these. And the last and most important feature of these socks is that they're knit using German short rows. And I recently put out a video, um, a short technique video, showing how to work German short rows, and the feedback was overwhelmingly positive. People just don't, people don't like picking up the wraps from wraps and turns in short rows, and I totally get it. They're, they're hard to see, and you're not sure you're picking up the right thing, and they really slow you down. Well, German short rows eliminate the wraps and turns, and they work, and they look great, and I don't even really understand why they work, because they're really simple, but they do, <laughs> and so they are in this pattern, and the pattern is written out um, row by row instructions um, for every row, every size. The, the pattern is sized for men, women, and kids. And this pattern is primarily for one sock at a time using double pointed needles, but the pattern includes bonus content. And the bonus content is a bonus video. You get the link to the video with the pattern. And it shows you how to modify this pattern for magic loop knitting, knitting on one long circular, which isn't very difficult really. But it also shows you how to modify this pattern for two at a time magic loop knitting, which is a little bit more involved. So if you'd like to get your copy of the pattern with the bonus content to follow along, I'll give you a link here on screen to my website. You'll also find a link to my website in the video description field below on YouTube. And also on my website you'll see um, uh, listed out the different yarns I use, the needle size that you need, um, pretty much all the information you need right down to my nail color if you want to know that will all be on my website. Uh, and next we're going to get started with the toe of the sock and that's coming right up. Before we get going on the toe I want to talk a little bit about the yarn that I used and I used sport weight yarn for this pair and DK weight yarn for this pair. And really, those two uh, yarn weights seem like they're almost interchangeable most of the time, and it turned out that it was true in this case. You can use either DK weight or sport weight. Did I say sock weight? I meant sport weight. Sport weight yarn, and I was able to use the exact same needle size and get the exact same gauge with those two weights, those two weights of yarn that kind of seems like one weight of yarn. As long as you are getting 100 grams of yarn, either in, 100 grams will either be in one skein or hank or two 50 gram balls, um, you'll have enough to knit a whole pair of socks. Anyway, we're going to get started with the toe of the sock. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. 
I want to explain first that I'm going to be using much bulkier yarn for demonstration. I'm going to use bulky yarn and these big thick needles um, to demonstrate the techniques. This pattern is actually knit with size 3 needles, which is 3.25 millimeter, and this is the DK or sport weight yarn that you'll want to use. But we're going to be using this super chunky stuff so you can really see what I'm doing. The first thing we're going to do is start off with a crochet chain for a provisional cast on. And this is how I always like to start out my toe up socks. I think it gives you the best tension and the best looking toe. Start out by tying a straight up knot in the yarn close to one end. This is going to let us know that this is the slip knot end of the yarn. Make a slip knot. And this is where you'll need your crochet hook because we're going to do a crochet chain. And you don't really have to know how to crochet to do this, but if you, um, this is all, this is all the crochet that you'll need to know. Um, but here's a link to my crochet chain video in case you need it. And you will crochet as many as the pattern tells you that you need for the size that you're knitting. I'm not counting. <laughs> I've been talking and not counting. When you're finished, just pull, break the yarn, pull the end of the yarn through and tighten it up a little bit. Now what we're going to do is pick up stitches in what is known as the spine of the crochet chain. So this side of the crochet chain is a bunch of V's. If you flip it over, you get the spine, or what I call the hyphens. You, I have my crochet chain backwards. You want to set it up so that the knot, the slip knot end is over here on the right. We're going to pick up stitches from right to left and we want to start picking up on the right side. So you get your yarn ready and you just need one needle for this. To pick up a knit, you put your needle into that horizontal loop. I'm going to slide it back out. Take your yarn and kind of fold it over leaving yourself a six inch tail and put that loop around the needle and pull it through and go into the next hyphen, wrap it and pull it through. If you ever lose track of where you are, just take a look kind of from far further away and make sure you're going into the right place. I'm going to take you through the first half of the short row toe in this video segment, and then we'll go into the second half in the next. I have no idea how many I have. Okay. That'll do for demonstration. I'm going to purl back across these stitches. Just pick up another double pointed needle. You'll notice that the first, the first part of the sock, the entire toe of the sock, is knit with just straight knitting. We're not knitting using all of the double pointed needles yet. We're just using two. So it's really just um, knitting in rows, flat knitting. Now the pattern is written out exactly row by row for whichever size you're knitting. Um, so you'll want to definitely follow the pattern. What I'm doing here is just demonstration. Um, but I want to show you how to work the German short rows. You're going to knit the number indicated in the pattern. and turn your work. And then 
<clears throat> this is where we actually work the German short row. In the pattern, I just abbreviated GSR. This is where we're going to work it. We're on the wrong side of the work. We're going to slip that stitch from the left needle to the right, take your working yarn and yank up on it a little bit so it gives you kind of a double loop stitch. Pull the yarn around and forward because this is a purl row and purl back across the stitches. We're just going to leave that double stitch there for later. You purl up, you purl as many stitches as the pattern tells you to again. And turn the work. And you're going to GSR on the right side of the work. <clears throat> to do that, you slip the stitch from the left needle to the right, pull up on the working yarn, and then just knit across the stitches as many as you're supposed to. Now on the knit side of the work, you don't really get the awesome uh, double stitch, you get more like a stitch and a yarn over. It's perfectly fine. It looks different, is my point, from the wrong side of the work to the right side of the work. I'm going to show you that again. Knit the number of stitches as indicated in the pattern. And <clears throat> it won't be all the way across the row from here on out. You do that and then GSR which on the wrong side of the work means slipping the stitch from the left needle to the right. Your yarn's already in front. Pull up on that stitch, pull the yarn forward between the two needles, and purl the number indicated in the pattern. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. You turn your work and GSR. Pull the yarn forward between the two needles. Slip the stitch. Yank up on the working yarn a bit and knit across those stitches. One more time on the right and the wrong side. Turn the work. We're on the wrong side. My working yarn's already in front. I'll slip a stitch from the left needle to the right, pull up on the working yarn, pull the yarn forward between the two needles, and purl. And one more time on, <clears throat> oh, turn the work, and on the right side, pull the yarn forward between the two needles, slip that stitch from left needle to right, pull up on the working yarn, and knit. So you can see we're ending up with a really shaped piece of work, even though this is just a little sample with bulky yarn. It's going to end up looking like we hope it will. Continue this way, working uh, the German short rows, the GSR, um, as many times as the pattern indicates for the size that you're knitting. And in the next segment, we're going to talk about picking up the wraps, which isn't picking up the wraps at all, but completing the German short row stitch. Once you've finished the first half of the toe, it's time to start working the second half. Let's get right to it. This is exactly how we left <laughs> this after the first segment and the first half of the German short rows. I'm going to show you how to complete the German short row and um, make the second half of the toe. I'm going to knit up to the first double stitch. And the pattern tells you exactly how many to knit, so you don't really have to look for them. But in this bulky yarn, they're really easy to see. You're going to knit the two halves of that double stitch together and knit the next stitch. Turn the work 
and do a German short row technique just like you did before on the same stitch. So since the yarn, <coughs> since we're on the wrong side of the work, the yarn's already in front, I slip the stitch, pull up, yarn forward, and purl. You're going to purl up to the first double stitch. And on this side, it looks more like a stitch and a yarn over. It looks a little different. Purl those two halves together and purl the two halves together on the next one. Turn the work. We're going to GSR technique on this stitch. So I'll yarn forward, slip that stitch, pull up on the working yarn, and knit across. So instead of picking up the tiny little crabby wraps around stitches, we're just knitting the two halves of the German short row together. There's my double stitch. I knit it together and I knit the two halves of the next stitch together. Turn the work, GSR. Purl those two together, purl the next two together, turn your work, GSR. And I want to get all the way down to the end because I want to show you what you do next in removing the provisional cast on. Okay, I'm down to the last one. I'll just knit those two halves together and turn the work. And the pattern's very clear about, um, about working this when you get to the last one. Um, I'm just gonna slip that first stitch, no GSR, and get to the last one on the purl side. Okay, I'll purl those two halves together and I finish the toe. Now granted this is uh, an awkward little toe <laughs> on bulky yarn, but you can see we very much have a shaped piece of, of knitting here. Now I'm going to remove the provisional cast on and I've set this out in front of me with the slip knot end over here on the right and the non-slip knot, uh, I'm sorry, I just got that backward. The slip knot end, the end with the knot is over here on the left, and the non-slip knot end is over here on the right. And this is where I want to start removing the provisional cast on. Remember how you just pulled that last end through the last loop? Well, you can um, just undo that. You can start unzipping this. I actually want to get some scissors out. I don't think I've ever released a provisional cast on without needing a pair of scissors and one of my handy little bamboo pins. Okay, so I'm unzipping all the extra ones and the first stitch is always wonky, always. <laughs> I just might as well tell you now, the yarn, the scrap yarn runs through this first stitch. So take your needle and get it through there, and then I'm gonna cut this short so it's easy to pull out. Okay, the rest of it will not go like that, just that first stitch. Now what we're doing is we are looking at the Vs in the sock yarn, the, the pink yarn. That's why we used a contrasting color, a very different color of, um, in the provisional cast on, the crochet chain. Because we're looking at the pink yarn and we're looking at the Vs, the knit stitches. We want to take the tip of our needle and run it under the right leg of each V. And this is how this looks. 
running under the right leg of the V. Each one. I like to try to get a whole bunch picked up at once. See, now I have a whole bunch and now I can unzip the crochet chain. And if all goes well, it unzips without snags. And it did. <laughs> I hope it kind of messes up because I want to show you <laughs> what to do when it kind of messes up. Okay, and now I, I put some of the stitches on there. I'm going to put more stitches on a third needle here. There's no way I did this whole crochet chain without snagging the yarn somewhere. I almost feel like making a fake snag. No way. No way is this thing going to unzip. <laughs> okay, let me just say, if you end up where you pull this and it's not unzipping, just take a close look and you'll see, um, don't cut any pink yarn, don't cut any um, of your sock yarn, but you can cut anything in the blue yarn, anything that is your scrap yarn color. So if I had a snag, I would just cut the blue yarn to unsnag it. Seriously, that never happens. It didn't snag once. Okay, well, I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket. So here we are. We're on three needles now, and um, I'm ready to work a row here. My working yarn is coming from this stitch here. I'm ready to work across this way. I'm going to slip the first stitch and knit across. There's one quick thing I want. Well, let me actually point this out before I start. These are the um, provisional cast-on stitches, and these are the live stitches that I had before. And there is often a gap here between the provisional cast-on stitches and the live stitches, and this will be the same on both the toe and the heel. You have the option of picking up an extra stitch or even an extra two stitches in these gaps to uh, keep there from being a gap. You can close up any gaps this way. I'm going to show you how to do that. And the pattern's really clear. Again, I'm just showing you the techniques here. You'll want to follow the pattern for the exact instructions for um, where your yarn is, and uh, I don't I don't even know what I'm saying. You want to follow the pattern for the exact instructions for the entire toe. So I knit across these stitches, and here is my gap. I'm going to take my needle and just. The same way we picked up stitches from the crochet chain, I'm going to put it under two legs of a V, wrap it and pull it through, and take a look. That looks really good. I'm going to keep going with that. I want to show you a bad example. Put it under, wrap it and pull it through, and that is actually leaving a hole. So I'm going to put it back where I had it. So I pick up that extra stitch and then work across the other stitches, work across the other stitches and pick up a stitch in here as well. And then on the following row, I will want to knit two together here and knit two together here to eliminate those stitches. They were just there for one row. There's also um, a trick I want to show you. Uh, that's probably not as easy to see. Let me do it on this one. <coughs> You'll see I have these little markers here. And I put these little yarn markers in so that when I knit the first sock, I can knit an exact copy <laughs> for the second sock. I put in a little yarn marker right after I finish the toe of the sock so that I can count the rows, the length of the foot. And then when I start the heel, I put in a little marker so that I can count from there to the cuff. And it's just so that I have two ma perfectly matching socks. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Once I, let me just finish up this row so I don't have four needles. Once I finish all the, the rounds and rows for the toe, you can choose to do this, just remember which one you chose, you can choose to do this before you pick up the stitches, um, before you work around at all. I usually do this before I do any working around, before I pick up stitches and eliminate them back out again, pick up the stitches in the gaps. Or you can do this after you do both of those things. You might want to note on your pattern, I left a yarn marker when, after I picked up stitches in the gap and decreased them back out. Or I picked up, I put in my yarn marker 
before I started knitting in the round. What I do is I take a, a bit of really lightweight yarn in a different color and put it on a tapestry needle and just string it through one of these stitches. And then tie a little knot. I think this is called an overhand knot. Is it? I'm not sure. I tie a little knot and I tighten it up. And you can just you can do this with a stitch marker. I just don't like plastic flopping around on um, when I'm trying to knit the sock. So I have this itty bitty yarn marker on there. I can knit across. It will stay there. It will not interfere with anything. But it'll make it a lot easier when I go to count rows. And we're at a point now where um, I'm just going to knit around and around the length of the foot. And I'll knit the length of the foot, um, stopping when the pattern tells me to because it's time to strike the heel at that point, which is what we're going to talk about next. Once you finish the length of the sock, you just go around and around and around knitting all the stitches. The pattern will tell you exactly when to stop and start knitting the heel. And the heel is worked exactly like the toe of the sock, which is crazy because you would never think those two things were the same. But if you take a look, they are exactly the same shape. And the whole thing comes together to make a foot. So it works, trust me. I'm going to show you um, a couple of tricks for getting started on the heel. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, here is my Jolly Green Giant um, sample here. And I'm ready to get started on the heel. And I have my yarn marker here, like I showed you um, in the last section, where this is where I finished the toe. And now that I've finished the length of the sock, I want to place another yarn marker because I want to know exactly how many rows or rounds I had in the foot of the sock so I can make, make a matching sock. So I'm gonna take some of my scrap yarn again and and mark this just like I did before and I won't tie the knot this time but you see I'll, I'll have these two markers here and this is just a little thing that I do you don't have to get fussy like this I want these two markers to be on the the instep the top of the sock and I want to work my heel on um, these back two needles so uh, the last row before I start working the heel, and um, I haven't done this, but I want to put these stitches on two needles and these stitches on one needle because I want to work my heel stitches um, across one needle like I did for the toe. But I will just slide things around to do this. I just grabbed an extra needle, slip the stitches around, and you always slip as if to purl. So now, there I've done it. This is the top of my foot where I have the stitches on two needles and all of my heel stitches are on one needle. And I'm gonna work back and forth use, doing the German short rows just like I did um, for the toe. It works out amazingly well. And then um, I will just knit the cuff and um, there's my marker. With this yarn, this yarn had a lot of yards to it. I was able to get a really long sock out of the women's, um, in the women's size. You're just going to knit the cuff until you're almost out of yarn. And I did the exact calculations for you. Um, to get about an inch of, of cuff, you want to start your, um, you want to start your two by two ribbing when you have about five grams of yarn left. That's how I ended up making these two matching socks. I actually use a scale. And it ended up that I had just like a foot of yarn left over and I just threw it away. I was so glad. So uh, about five grams of yarn, and that worked for both the DK and the sport weight yarn that I used. That'll give you enough for 11 rows, which is about one inch. And then you're ready to start the bind off. So I have a little sample here of the two by two rib. I'll show you really quickly. If you haven't worked two by two rib, I'll give you a quick overview of that. And then I wanna show you how to work this awesome stretchy bind off. So we're going to just keep working around, but we're gonna start with two knit stitches, yarn forward and purl, yarn back and knit. 
whoops, I just yarned back because I was tightening that stitch. And I, um, the pattern tells you how to arrange the stitches so you always end on two purl and start a new stick with two knits. It's easier to start a new needle with two knits. Okay. Now at this point, um, well, when you start the two by two rib, you probably want to place a marker to mark the beginning of the round. The beginning of the round has not really made any difference at this point, the beginning or the end of a round, but now it will because you do want to make it all the way around with the ribbing so it's even all the way around. This is the only time the beginning of the round even makes a difference. So I just put a clippy marker in. Now this bind off is really great. It's a, a simple stretchy bind off and it is really stretchy. You see there? And it's really easy to work. I'm going to give you a quick overview of this. Now this is knit two, purl two rib, and this is how to work this bind off in this kind of rib. I'm going to start by knitting two stitches, taking the tip of my left needle and putting it into the front of those two stitches, which means my back needle is kind of in the back loop of those two. Wrap it and pull it through. So I just knit two together through the back loop. The next stitch is a purl, so I purl one. Then I take the tip of my left needle and put it into the back of those two stitches, purl those two together. The next stitch is a purl. Put my left needle into the back of those two stitches, purl those two together. The next stitch is a knit, so I knit it tip of my left needle, put it into the front of those two stitches, knit them together through the back loop, knit, knit them together through the back loop, purl, purl them together, purl, purl them together. So you get the idea, you do that all the way around, Oops, I guess I want to do it all the way around because I want to show you one more thing. My needle keeps catching on my sleeve. There we go. I want to show you how to correct the jog that you get. I'm just going to speed through the rest of this. I will tell you this technique is easier to work with pointier needles. Okay. I hope I have enough yarn. <laughs> I just I cut the yarn. I hope I have enough to finish this. You hang tight with me for just a moment. I'll speed through this. When you're knitting in the round, you're actually knitting in a big spiral. Unlike crochet where you chain up and, um, whoops, crochet you chain up and you are actually knitting like circle on top of circle. With, um, with knitting, knitting around and around means you're knitting in a giant spiral, which can leave you with a pretty substantial stair step after the bind off in anything you knit. So I'll show you how to correct that. Oh, I'm going to have just enough yarn. Whew. Oh, 
Okay. Now I want to take, I make that last loop big and grab the yarn, break the yarn, pull it through. And there is a really nice, big, substantial jog. Everything's going around really smoothly until we have the very last stitch and it's, it looks terrible. We're going to fix that. We're going to make it look perfect and smooth. So I have a tapestry needle. I'll thread the end of the yarn on the tapestry needle. And our goal is to make just continuous, um, continuous V's all the way around the bind off. And to do that, we're going to make a V. We're going to kind of stitch a V into this. So um, my terrible end is over here. Here's my, my nice end. I'm going to go under two legs of the first V over here and then go back down into the stitch where the yarn came out of over here. And that makes a V. And when I do that, this is a really loose gauge and I actually have a hole here that you probably won't see in other knitting, but um, because I have a hole there, I'm going to actually just stitch that up. You won't see it in the DK weight socks, but you see how nicely that smoothed all of that down. And to correct that hole, I'm just going to weave this through. I have to weave in the end anyway. And this is on the inside of the sock, so no one's going to see it. Whoops, that last one was kind of a big jump. Like, I'm, I'm not... <laughs> I just did that like I was concerned that someone was going to look inside the sock and be dissatisfied with my sloppy work. Uh, well, I guess it's, it's good to do careful work. So you see now I closed up that gap and everything looks good and this looks smooth and I can just finish weaving in that end and that looks very nice. And it's stretchy. That's it. Those are all the steps for making German short row DK weight toe up socks. Uh, if you're working from the pattern and you have the link to the bonus material, I will see you in the next segment. To everyone else, good luck. What? <laughs>